it is very easy to create a new project plan in Asana. Once you log in into the application, all you need to do is to click the plus button and select a new project. You're presented with the screen and three different choices. Blank project, use a template, or import a spreadsheet. Using a template is the easiest way to create a new project. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to start from scratch and select Create a new blank project. The title of my project is WooCommerce Implementation on the WordPress. And once I selected the title, I can choose a default view. There are four different views, and you see samples of the views on the right-hand side. The default choice is List View. You also have a choice of Board View, if you're interested in Kanban boards, that might be a good choice. If you know the Gantt charts, the timeline might be a good choice. Or if you just like the calendar, that might be an excellent choice for you. I am going to choose the board view because this is the best view for the small projects. At least from my experience. Last but not least important consideration here is the privacy setting. You have two choices. You can make this project public to everybody on your team, or you can make it private and only have visibility to this particular project yourself. I'm going to choose the public to product, and product is Asana's concept of where you make it public to the product. Public to product is the default choice here on the list. And this is what I'm going to keep. Once I'm done with the settings, I'm going to click Create New Project. Once you set up a new project in the tool, you get to what's called the Kanban view. You might heard a different terms for that, but that's ultimately the idea of simplicity. Kanban view works very well if you are just one person or if you have a small team. Let me explain. There are only three columns here, to-do column, in-progress column, and then a complete column. For every task that you create, you keep all initial tasks in the to-do column. And in fact, Asana gives you a default task one. You can add new tasks in each and every section. So let's see what we can do with task one. I'm going to click on the task one and make necessary updates. Because my project is to build an e-commerce store, the main task here is to design product offerings, actually design what I am going to be selling. And that's what this task is all about. I need to assign it to somebody. And in my case, I'm just going to assign it to myself. I also will benefit of setting up a due date because this is what project is. It's something that has the end date. So ultimately, what you need to do is drive your project to the implementation. Let me set the end date for that particular task. I am going to pick July 20th. This is a good date because it gives me time to build the product offerings for my e-commerce store. Next field here is the dependency. But because this is the first task I am creating for my project, there are no dependencies. That's just the first one. Maybe for the next task, I will be able to set up a dependency and make it dependent upon completion of this particular task. Moving forward, the next field here is the description. I'm going to add the description real quick. And ultimately, my description shows what actually needs to be accomplished as part of this task. The key for this task is to complete research based on the demand for the ebooks on the topic of artificial intelligence. You need to understand the sales volume. You need to understand the content that is offered in those particular ebooks. You need to understand authors that write about this, as well as the competition. The cool thing about Asana is once you entered all of the values, you don't even need to click the Save button, because it's all saved automatically. All I did right now, I just clicked an other available field in my browser. So now we have a first task. Let me explain to you what we see on the screen. We have Asana task. We have this task in the column To Do which means I haven't started working on this particular task. As soon as I start, I can drag it into in progress. And that's the indicator for other people or even for myself, if I'm the only one working on this project, that I'm currently working on this task. Once I'm done working on this task, I can just drag it to complete section. And that's ultimately what's called a life cycle for the task in my project. Typical successful project from my experience has seven different phases. The first phase is project initiation. This is where you build your project plan. You decide on financial viability. Ultimately, viability 
is something where you ask the question, is this something that's going to help me, this particular project? That's the most important question. Is it going to help my business? In the next phase, you decide how you would do a proof of concept. Ultimately, you do implementation on a smaller scale. Step three is go-no-go no go decision. Are you making a big investment? Are you deciding to move forward? And everything that you've learned from the proof of concept in the main implementation of the project. Phase four is the design phase. This is where you designed what you're going to implement. Phase five is where you build and test your product. Phase six is the actual launch. And phase seven is where you're deciding how are you going to continue with this project? Are you going to continue and do small enhancements or maybe large enhancements? Are you going to keep the team on board or are you going to stop at this point and decide where are you going to invest your money and energy next? The view that I'm showing you here is very cool for the small project, but imagine the large team. And this particular view works extremely well for just one person or small team, I would say under seven members. But imagine the team of 100 members. This is where you would benefit from the structure I just showed you with the seven key milestones. And the best thing about Asana is that it allows you for the flexibility. Let me switch to another project and I'm going to scroll down and select another project on my list, which is called Create an E-Commerce Store. And I'll show you how in the different view you can add all of the sections into your project plan. We are looking at the different project and we are looking using the different view. To avoid confusion, let me switch to the board view to remind you the same view we just had. But instead of to do, doing and done, we have project initiation, doing and done. Ultimately, if we switch to another view, to the list view, this is the view that we get. An equivalent of the section here in this view is an equivalent of the column in the board view. That's how simple it is. And ultimately, all we need to do to set up this structure with the seven key milestones is just take the content of the seven milestones and create section for each individual milestone in Asana. And you can do it in any view that's available in Asana. For example, project initiation column matches the key milestone one on the list. So if we really want to set up the structure in Asana, our next step would be to modify section two and call it proof of concept. And doing it is extremely easy in Asana. You just type on the section title and change the content. You can do exactly the same thing for the column three, go, no, go decision. Let me just switch you to the list view so you can see that every change that I made in the board view will be reflected also in the list view and in any other view. It's just the same data that's shown differently. Now we ran out of sections to change. So all we need to do now is to add a new section. And you can also do it in any view available. Our next section on the list is design section. All I need to do is click add section and add design. And I can go through exactly the same steps for all remaining sections. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful and helped you to solve your challenge. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this and we will make sure to deliver it to you in the future. Also please make sure to check out our free and premium resources on the website. All you need to do is to go to the menu section and select appropriate options. In addition, make sure you don't forget to look at the downloads in the description section of this video. I also recommend that you follow online training for everyone. We are constantly delivering new content to help you solve different problems and challenges. And I also have a favor to ask. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please make sure to share this video with your friends or colleagues to help them solve their challenges. Make sure to leave your questions or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. Thanks for watching.